Stop doing this. It is making you look old. Hello, gorgeous girl. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hello, I'm Tracy. I'm 49 years old. I'm a mom to a toddler, and I'm really passionate about helping women look and feel their best at any age and at any stage of life. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. It's totally free to do so. And if you want more content like this, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up so that I know that you are into content like this. So before we dive into our content, I've got 10 things that you might be doing that are aging you, I want to just start by saying this. You do you. If I give a suggestion here of something that I think is a little bit aging, but you absolutely love it, we're all grown-ups here. So go ahead and do it. These are just the generalities because here's the deal. If you were my best friend and I was talking to you and you asked like, how does this look? I might say, you know what, sweetheart, I love you so much and you're so beautiful, but I don't love those shoes. I'm just gonna be honest with you, right? It's not to be mean. I never want anyone to feel bad, but I do want you to just be open to, if you are doing some of these things, how to tweak that a little bit. And also, if I've missed anything, let me know down in the comments. And I gotta tell you that numbers nine and 10 are really my favorites of this whole video, so you'll wanna stay to the end. The first thing that you might be doing that might be making you look older is your hair. Now listen, I'm not having a good hair day today myself. I'm just gonna be honest. I didn't have time to get a blowout. I did it myself. I'm not great at doing hair. But one thing that I can tell you is that more youthful looking hair is when we have shinier hair, when we have healthy hair, when we take good care of ourselves. That's why I love getting a blowout because I don't do it as well as those girls do. But if you are wearing the same hairstyle since 1985, it's time to switch it up, you know? I Listen, I love of the Real Housewives. <laughs> Judge me if you want, it's fine. I have a strong skin here. But especially Lisa Rinna was one of my favorite, favorite housewives of the whole franchise. That woman has had her signature hairdo since like 1982. And finally, when she started playing with wigs and other hairdos, it was like, you could actually see just how beautiful she is and her bone structure and like what a great face she has. So if you were doing the same kind of feathered hair or frosty tips or whatever your 80s style look is, I see this a lot. <laughs> it's probably not working for you and you might want to just talk to your hairstylist and just say, hey, I want to switch things up a little bit. Now, I've been on YouTube for the last 13 years. How crazy is that? My hair hasn't changed that much, but I have changed a few things. I sometimes change where I part my hair. Recently, I've been parting it more in the center. I just tend to like that. It just works for me, but I've also gone less blonde with my color, which I actually think makes me look better. Having that really white, very, very highlighted hair, I don't know, I don't think I could do that right now, especially at this age, you know, being 49. So my point to you is, just take an honest look, talk to a trusted friend who's gonna be nice to you about it and just say, hey, what do you think about my hair? If you were me and you were gonna switch up your hair a little bit, what do you think I should do? Avoid those old styles, that kind of feathered, that like very hair sprayed and curled. Listen, I grew up in Massachusetts and we were like the queens of the rolled back bangs like this. If you're still doing that, it's time to let it go. If you're getting really frosty tips or if you realize like your high school diploma picture and your hair right now are the same, it's probably time to just tweak it up just a little bit. You know, I saw something really funny on Instagram the other day, and it was talking about the Golden Girls and their ages when they shot the show, and they were pretty much about my age. But what really, really aged them was the hairstyles that they were wearing. So use this as an example of, okay, how can I just zhuzh it up a little bit to make it just look more of the moment, right? That's gonna give you a more youthful appearance. And it's not always about chasing youth, but just really looking and feeling your best. This second thing is shocking, and especially I think it might be a little bit shocking coming from me as a personal trainer for over 25 years, is that if you're over-exercising, it might be making you look old. I know, I know, it can be a really crazy thing to hear, but hear me out. 
when we are older, we just naturally lose fat in our face, right? When we're younger, we have that like baby fat look and it's a more fuller look. But if you are extremely, extremely thin, what can happen is your face starts to really, really lose the fat here and it can drag you down and it just makes you look a little bit older than you probably are. So my point is stick with me doing what I always recommend, 30 minutes a day, moving your body every single day, but 30 minutes of actual structured workout. So inside my fitness membership, Total Body Transformation, we recommend that you do 30 minutes a day, that's it. And we really structure the workouts in a way so that you are not gonna be over-exercising, you're not gonna be injuring yourself, you're actually gonna enjoy yourself and you're gonna be able to keep that beautiful, youthful appearance because number one, you're not gonna break your body, but you're also gonna feel really good and a smile is very youthful. So, so if you're a woman who has been struggling and you want to keep your weight since high school and it doesn't feel good and it doesn't feel sustainable for you and you've been working out really, really hard and pushing yourself to maintain that weight, that's your body telling you something and giving you a sign. You know, we are meant to evolve and grow and change with time. And so if that weight that you had in high school is not a happy weight, which is what I consider more like a weight that you can sustain by making healthy choices, you know, by eating healthy food, by moving your body daily, and you're able to fit in the clothes that you like and feel really good, that's your healthy weight. If you're pushing yourself to do something from 20, 30, 40 years before, I want you to just reevaluate that a little little bit. You know, I had, uh, when I taught Pilates back in New York City, I had this wonderful client who was from Germany and she was extremely blunt. And one of the things that she told me, she said, you know, in Germany, we have the saying, it's either your face or your and it's kind of true, you know? Um, so I really think that if you want to keep a youthful appearance, even just having like a couple extra pounds on you, it's okay. I personally, in case you're wondering, I don't even own a scale. I teach weight loss. I teach fitness. This is my life's work. And you know, my members inside TBT, they know I don't own a scale. We don't talk about weight in there. It's really about fitness and feeling good. And yes, you know, a good positive side effect might be that you lose inches and you might lose some pounds, but that's not the focus. The focus is on you moving your body, transforming from the inside out and really being in that happy place because that's about youth. So if you are over 40, and you've been struggling with your body and struggling with staying consistent and motivated with getting and staying fit, this is an invitation for you to join my masterclass, Fit and Fabulous Over 40. I'll leave all the information up here and also down below in the description box, but it really gives you the roadmap to feeling and looking your absolute best at ages 40, 50, 60, and beyond. So I'll see you there. Okay, someone's gonna get mad at me. I know you're not gonna like this, but if you are shopping exclusively at what I like to call women of a certain age clothing stores, it might be aging you. So I'm gonna say it, Chico's. <laughs> Chico's. I have a joke with one of my best girlfriends who's a, a celebrity stylist in LA and we'll send each other ads for Chico's just to like kind of poke fun at each other. But truly, I'm not saying that there might not be some adorable things. I really think that any store, no matter where you go, you can find chic things because style comes from the inside. But if you are exclusively shopping at clothing stores that really have a formula, right? Wearing things that are dated, that are just kind of screaming like, 15, 20 years ago. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about statement necklaces. Look, I know that as we age, sometimes we don't like the way our neck looks. I think like a chic mock turtleneck or like a little scarf, but a statement necklace, it's actually drawing more attention to that area if you're trying to avoid it. Those long vests that you throw over an outfit, those just scream like you're trying to hide. And I really believe no matter what age you are, be seen, be beautiful, be yourself. You are worthy of being seen, right? And even things like your jeans, you know, if you're wearing like super skinny, any tight jeans, even if you've got the body to wear them. <laughs> That style, it just isn't really current right now. Now, I'm not saying that we have to chase trends. I certainly do not do that, and I don't believe that you have to do that, but I also think one of the beautiful things about getting older is we start knowing what looks good on us, and we can pick and choose the trends that are out there and say, ooh, you know what? That color does look amazing on me. Oh, but that sheer trend, I am not going there, right? So just be open to changing things up a little bit 
with your clothing and also where you shop. I'm sorry, but you know, if Chico's is your only store that you're going to, you might want to switch it up because it's probably aging you and you can find so many other places to find fabulous clothes that really make you look and feel fantastic. Now here's something else that might be making you look old and this one is so, so important. I can't stress it enough and it is how are you putting on your makeup? I'm so passionate about this and I actually did a whole video about this. So if you haven't already checked it out, you can check it out here. It's really, you know, how to make yourself look youthful through makeup. Now, I will tell you, I'm not a makeup artist. That is not my area of expertise, but this video was really, really popular because women really resonated with the fact that I'm not perfect <laughs> and I've just found what really works well and people really resonated with it. So if you're doing things like putting really heavy, heavy eyeliner on underneath or again, doing the same makeup that you did in high school and you're now 40, 50, 60 or 70, it is not gonna work for you anymore, you know? And I don't want you to find that out the hard way by seeing a photo of yourself and being like, wait a minute, what? So. Talk to your friends, you know, talk to your daughters, your nieces, right? How can I freshen up my look a little bit? It might even be worth it for you to hire a professional makeup artist, right? To get one application and just say, listen, I want to learn how to do makeup for my face and my skin now. To me, that's just really investing in yourself because when we look really good, we feel really good. We're more confident. We bring a different energy out into the world. We're kinder to people. We're more willing to step forward and be seen. So don't think that it's like, oh, such a luxury. You know, it doesn't have to cost you a bajillion dollars, but maybe, you know, find someone that does makeup for weddings or something and say, hey, would you actually, you know, apply makeup for me and allow me to video it or let me take notes or, you know, help me out to find out which products work best for my skin right now. You are a worthwhile investment. And if you don't want to invest in that, then just ask a friend or ask a niece, ask someone to help you out so that you can just update a little bit. And like I said, if you don't have anyone to ask, well, you've got me and check out that video next. Oh, I'm loath to say this one because I am right on the edge of this myself. And that is if you can't see and you're squinting to read, get readers. You know, I think glasses on women, especially women over 40 look sexy AF. I think you look smart. You look sexy. You look gorgeous. You look like, you know, a thing or two, cause don't we all, but if you were like squinting to read something and having to hold it like way back, that's not a good look. And there's so many amazing readers out there that you can get your hands on. Now I do not have readers yet. I told you I'm getting really close. I've noticed like I can't really watch them. I do wear contacts. They're not colored contacts, just, you know, contacts. And it's, it's really actually for me to see distance. But what I think is happening is that he's been kind of slowly reducing my distance to prolong me getting readers. But when I need readers, I'm going to get readers. I just think that there's so many cute ones out there. I wish I could recommend a brand. If you've got a brand that you recommend, let us know in the comments down below. I love chatting with you guys in the comments section. Um, but glasses are hot. I think glasses are sexy. I love wearing them, you know, for blue light. I wear them all the time. I've got tons and tons of pairs. And when the time comes for me to get readers, you better believe I'm going to find the cutest ones and I will let you know. But if you need them, use them because otherwise you're creating wrinkles and you're not fooling anyone. So just use readers if you need them. Now, this is one that I feel like I don't need to say, but I feel like I gotta say, if that makes sense. And that is if you are not protecting your skin from the sun, you are accelerating your aging. You know, I remember once when I was in my twenties, I went to a dermatologist and she was like, listen, you shouldn't be laying out in the sun trying to get tan, you know? And those of us like me that grew up in the seventies and eighties, we were slathering baby oil all over our skin. We were trying to get a deep, dark tan of the tropics back then. But we've since learned that that not only causes aging, but it can also cause cancer. So we don't want to do that. Now, Yes, of course, I know someone's gonna say, you know, the sun is healthy for you and you need your vitamin D. Yes, absolutely. I do believe that, you know, having vitamin D and getting some of that from the sun, but if you don't wanna be going out in those strong hours of the sun. So here's what I suggest. Finding some good mineral-based sunscreens uh, are really, really great. I use a powder mineral one from Supergoop that I absolutely love. It's so easy to apply and I put it all over my face, my neck, my chest, and even my arms when I'm going out for a walk. Um, you know, I also love the Supergoop 
Goop Unseen Sunscreen. I use that kind of like a primer uh, and I just use it more like, like a tinted moisturizer in my makeup. So those are two products. It's not sponsored that I absolutely love, but also, you know, wearing sunglasses, just protecting your eyes. Wear a hat if it's like blazing sun, you know, coming from the Northeast, living in New York, you know, for over 20 years and now living down here in Miami, the sun is strong. So whenever I go to the beach and I love going to the beach, I'm always, you know, with sunglasses, with sunscreen on and, you know, under an umbrella. I'm not trying to get tan. I'm just enjoying being outside, being in nature, you know, hearing the waves, feeling the sand between my toes, all of that is fantastic, but we don't want to be baking in the sun anymore. And I believe that most of us know that, but some people still do that or think, oh, my skin is dark. It doesn't matter what color your skin is, you can get skin cancer and it's going to accelerate your aging. Yes, people with darker skin or, you know, different nationalities, they might have genetics in their favor, but you know, at the end of the day, so just be smart about it and be mindful of your sun exposure because that is the quickest way to accelerate your aging. So something else that might be making you look older than you really are is your midsection. You know, I talk about this a lot on my channel. It's what we like to call that menopause middle. Now I am a woman that is 49 years old and I am in menopause, not perimenopause anymore. I'm in full blown menopause. So I know that things can really change when you're in perimenopause and in menopause, but I'm here to tell you that the biggest thing that you have control over is your lifestyle and your nutrition. How are you eating? How is your stress level? How is your sleep? Are you hydrating? Are you moving your body? So I did a whole video about specifically belly fat and you'll definitely want to check that out after this video. It really breaks down what could be causing that belly fat and what you can do to prevent it. So you definitely want to check that out next. And I go into deeper detail there, but here's the thing. You don't have to accept that as just being normal. You really don't. You know, it was so great. The other day I was at an event for my Pilates instructor um, celebrating, you know, being 10 years at her Pilates studio. And I was looking around the room and it was women of all ages there. And especially I would say women over 40 that were there. Many that were like in, I would say in their sixties uh, and you know, even beyond. And I was looking around and I was like, what an amazing looking group of women. Because of practicing Pilates, everyone's posture was so great. Everyone obviously, you know, was exercising, moving their body and just had this like energy to them that didn't say like, Oh, the party's over for me because you know, don't look at me. I'm, I'm menopausal or I'm postmenopausal or, you know, whatever. Like that's not, that's not the energy that we want. And you know, in this community, that is not the energy that we subscribe to. Right? So my point is that things can get better with age and with time and even through menopause. If you're not moving, if you're not eating healthy food, if you're not taking good care of yourself and you're getting into that energy of, well, this is just aging. I'm here to tell you it's not. You absolutely can improve. So you want to check out that video next where I really break everything down for you. Here's another one where someone's probably going to get mad at me, but I understand. Let me, let me just start this by saying I understand having to work with what you've got. Okay. But if you are wearing those ugly orthopedic looking sensible shoes, you're probably aging yourself. I get it. You might have an injury. Maybe you have fallen arches. Listen, I have gigantic bunions and it's so gross when people message me about bunions. I'm like, I can't please stop. But my point is I was a former dancer. I get it. Like I don't love my feet. I have issues. Thankfully, you know, knock on wood, I don't have any like pain or problems with them, but I understand wanting to feel comfortable. Right? So it's important that yes, in your home, maybe you find a slipper. I actually will leave you a slipper linked here that I found that really helps my arches. So it gives me a lot of support. I don't get back pain. I don't get foot pain. And when I don't wear them, I really feel the difference. But when I am out, in the world, I am going to wear a cute shoe. Now I'm not telling you you've got to wear heels before you get mad at me. I'm not saying you got to wear heels, but find some flats, even comfortable flats or even flats that help whatever foot issue you have that actually are super cute here. You can do that. But if you're wearing those shoes that just scream, 
old, orthopedic, we can do better now. That is again 20, 30 years ago. There are many, many options that have hidden arch support or hidden bunion support or hidden this or that that you can find on the market today. So do your research, just do a little search in Google, ask your friends, but really you can find a cute flat, a cute sneaker, a cute anything these days that will really support you. And, you know, bonus points that wearing a cute sneaker these days, it's not inappropriate. You know, for most circumstances, it's okay for you to wear sneakers, you know? Um, so, and it's very, very on trend. So look for things that you like that are comfortable, but that aren't screaming old and orthopedic, okay? Okay, here come my two favorites next, so definitely stick with me here. Another thing that we've touched on just a little bit, something that could be making you look old is what I like to call your curmudgeon -y attitude. <laughs> now, I'm sure no one here watching this has that curmudgeon -y attitude, but if you're constantly negative, if you're constantly complaining, if you're constantly trying to bring other people down or just being like what I like to consider like a negative Nancy or a Debbie Downer, that's gonna make you look older because you're also frowning, right? <laughs> you're like causing wrinkles around your face. You're not fun to be around, and I bet you're not really enjoying your life if that's the attitude that you have. I mean, let Let's be honest, between us, we all have friends that seem so much older than they really are, and that's because of their attitude, right? Everything's, you know, negative or bad or complaining about this or complaining about that, right? And so as much as we might love these people, unfortunately, we can't live for them. So if you are that kind of person or you know people like that, try to keep a little bit of distance because our attitude, a youthful attitude is about being positive, about being excited. You know, as I mentioned, I have a four-year-old daughter. The smallest things make her so, so excited. You know, whether it be a new toy or, you know, telling her teacher something or one of our friends coming to visit. Like she just lights up and it's such a good reminder for me to just know like, this is life and life is now and it's in the moment and we are blessed to be here no matter what our age is. It's something to be proud of. So the more that we can be happy and joyful and look for things that make us happy and joyful and excited, that's gonna just show up in your face and people are gonna be like, what did you do to yourself? You just look great. It's like, no, because you're happy. So drop the curmudgeon attitude or those curmudgeon attitude friends and focus on the joy and love and life and excitement. And the last thing that might be making you look older is constantly saying no to new experiences. Now, as we age, right, and especially it's just human nature, the way our brain functions is when something is known for us, our brain, equates that with safety. It's known, it's safe, okay, so this is good. So we are always looking for more of the same. But when we are young, new things are constantly coming in. Like every day, my daughter's like trying a new food or we read a new book or she notices something or you know, all these new experiences and her brain is just lighting up with all of these new things. Unfortunately, as we age, you know, we're used to things. So it's like, oh yeah, whatever, it's a sunny day. There's that bird, you know, and I've read that book like 15 times, right? So my point is, as we age, to keep our mind youthful, start looking for things that are new, you know? So one of the things that I do is I take Italian classes once a week. It just works my brain in a different way. It's a break in my week from business, from parenting, from, you know, just my normal stuff that I do where I'm just thinking and using a different part of my brain. I'm a huge reader, you know? So I'm always constantly buying new books, reading books. I read on my Kindle, which shows that I'm over 40, right? But, um, you know, just finding new things, new experiences, saying yes to things because that's what makes you number one interesting but also makes you have a more youthful life. So again, my point here is we're not chasing youth. We're trying to look and feel our best at the age and stage that we are in right now. However, by implementing some of these tips, you absolutely are gonna create a life and a look that is gonna be more youthful. And I promise you, you're gonna have a lot more fun too. So I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful for you. What was your number one takeaway? And if I missed anything, definitely make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so. It's completely free to do so. And make sure you tap on that bell so that you know every single time I have a new video that goes live. All right, that's what I've got for you. I'll see you next time. Bye.